Black Sports Network presents the College Lacrosse Game of the Week. Today, live from Rafferty Stadium, the Fairfield Stags of the CAA host the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers out of the Big Ten. Welcome here to Fairfield alongside Steve Panarelli. I am Travis Eldridge. Happy to be alongside you for this one. Quite the matchup a team of two teams in a similar spot in this season. You have Rutgers on one side at 2-0. and Coming off two pretty impressive wins so far. Well, if you're Rutgers, you want to establish yourself as a top 20 team. you got to come in here today and take care of business. Uh, this will be a nice win for them. Get 3-0 and and really keep this ball rolling for them here. As for Fairfield, they had a real sloppy game in game one. Losing to Richmond, a ranked team at that point 15 to 3 but they bounce back nicely last week yeah don't know where they are right now you know the one and one get a ranked opponent coming into town here today so we're going to find out a lot about these guys and kind of see where they're at as a team so it'll be interesting to see how they show up and play today and this is an opportunity for a landmark win for Rutgers head coach Brian Brecht in his sixth season, going for his 100th career win. Of course, won 60-plus games as head coach at Siena College, now in his sixth season with, with Rutgers. On the Fairfield side, Andy Copeland in his ninth season with the Stags, the third coach in Fairfield history. At one point, was the youngest head coach in the country when he was hired by Maris back in 2004. Taking a look at the goalies for this matchup, Max Edelman, the junior, starting in goal for the Scarlet Knights. About nine goals against uh, per game so far this season. A transfer from the Community College of Baltimore County, Essex. On the other side, Tyler Baring, his third year as a starter, the career leader in goals against average at Fairfield, coming off a first team all CAA the season a year ago. So the face off set for this one 15th ranked Rutgers against Fairfield. We're all down and set to go. The face-off, Joe Francisco for Rutgers. Going up against Joe Delasho for the Stags. Delasho looks like he won the clamp, but Rutgers scoops up the loose ball, and they'll get the first possession of this one. And that's something to watch here today. If you're Fairfield, you want to dictate pace, maybe slow it down. Uh, a lot of ball possession, so face-offs are going to be critical if you're the Fairfield Stags. Again, our first look at this Rutgers Scarlet Knights offense in the black uniforms, the chromed out silver helmets. This is a look at first line midfielder Jeff George, the senior from Warren, New Jersey. Had a beat on his man, feeds in front, took his eyes off it. And a loose ball, big hit. And it'll be Fairfield possession. Right there, Connor Murphy, just like you said, took his eyes off the ball, had a good opportunity there. If he could have corralled that pass, would have been a nice one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. And so Fairfield will look to clear here. So they have a chance to bring it over the midfield line, and they'll get their first offensive possession of this one. Joe Rodriguez brings it in. He gets it over to midfielder Matt Sharp. And they set up the offense here on the left side of the field at Ratliff Stadium. First line, midfield unit in there. You got Sharp, Brennan, Jack Brennan, and Kendall Cahey. This is Sharp. Tosses. Back out to Rodriguez. Around the top of the box. Methodical first possession here for Fairfield. And I talked about it before. Look for Fairfield to take long possessions here. I don't want to get into a run and gun competition with Rutgers, so they're going to make Rutgers' defense make stops and play long stretches. Okay, he feeds in front all the way through. Sharp shot wide. Backed up, though, by Cahey in Fairfield keeps possession. If you're Rutgers' defense, you can't be lulled to sleep like you just were there. Can't leave guys wide open. you got to be focused for the entire possession. That was our first look at the fantastic sophomore Colin Burke, number 42 in white for Fairfield. An all-co-CAA co player of the year last year as just a freshman. And he works behind the cage here for this Stags offense. Preseason all player of the year as well in the CAA. And he took a high hit, no flag. Fans wanted one, but Fairfield keeps possession. Burke still with it. 
Rolling near side. And a ward call against Bolt. Burke. Rutgers picks it up. It's a little ticky tack right there. Just transitioning his arm, didn't really push off, but the ref saw it a different way. Rutgers does like to go in transition. Bit of an opportunity there, and they'll slow it up. One thing to, to keep an eye on is this in this one, the defensive midfield for this Rutgers team, Christian Bazone, Christian Scarpello, guys that can play offense as well. Well, Fairfield has to make a decision. Do you, know, do you try to get off the field and get your defensive middies on, or do you stay and play? Uh, if I'm Fairfield, I'd rather play six on six as opposed to possibly giving up five on fours and four on threes. But we'll see how that plays out throughout the game. So here's the possession for Rutgers, slowing it down. They have those midfielders on, the, the offensive middies, Casey Rose, Chad Tolliver, along with Jeff George. Here's George. Feeds back out to Joe Rodriguez. Spins at the top, beats his man. He's got a lane. Bearing maybe a little piece of that one, and it's backed up by Jules Henningberg. This is the standout for Rutgers at the attack unit. Jules Henningberg working behind the cage. Stutter steps. Has a little bit of a lane, tough angle. Deflected behind, and Henningberg's role certainly maybe changed a little bit this year with the, the loss of Adam Charlambides. He's out for the year, the Big Ten freshman of the year last year as a first year player for the Scarlet Knights team. He's out as is. As there's a turnover there for Fairfield, and they bring it over the midfield stripe. As, as is uh, Christian Trasolini as well, the midfielder standout uh, for this Rutgers team, both out for the year with injuries. And so that offense is certainly a new look offense for Rutgers. The good thing, though, if you're Rutgers, is that they can score in transition, so they can manufacture some goals, you know, outside of that six on six set. So another look at this Fairfield offense. No score, about five minutes into this one. Let's go! It's Colin Burke. Tosses it behind Alex Wagner, the freshman from Thorndale, Pennsylvania, out of Bishop Shanahan High School. Wagner did not play in that 15-3 loss to Richmond to start the year. And Coach Andy Copeland was pretty high on the freshman as he came back against that in, Buck, in that Bucknell game, scored a goal and an assist in his first collegiate action. Loose ball in front, scooped up, kick save. Edelman keeps it out. Really good look for Jack Brennan, but Edelman keeps it scoreless, and here come the Scarlet Knights in transition. Extra pass, Henningberg off the pipe. Let's see. Let's see. And, and you got a really good look of how Rutgers, how fast they go from defense to offense and create those odd man situations. Wasn't able to finish there, but those are the types of plays that you look for from Rutgers with the way they play. And so here comes that first offensive midfield unit for the Scarlet Knights, George and Casey Rose. Rose has been pretty good so far. Three goals on 13 shots. Here's George, top of the box. Looks to bull dodge, but he's kept out. Now over to Hedingberg. They play pitch and catch. Rose spins, winds, fires just high. Rutgers really attacking the short stick. Defenders of Fairfield getting them into two-man games, two-man opportunities here. You, you, you're watching, they're setting a lot of picks up top uh, and really making the short stick defenders from Fairfield work. You're looking at a very uh, established unit here for Fairfield. Three senior long stick defensemen who are starters. You got a senior goalie, so these guys are certainly experienced at that end of the field. Rose has that short stick, spins again at the top, feeds over, low shot just a little wide for George. George maybe thought it went through a hole in the cage. So our referees talking this one over. 
Wouldn't want to make this call. And they say it's good. Jeff George gets the Scarlet Knights on the board. We're gonna have to take another look at that one. And that is a, a first for me. As you take a look at the replay again, the midfielders attacking those short sticks, finds George on the wing and rips it low to low. Getting a little older, I couldn't see that either, <laughs> even on the replays. Maybe my eyes were going. It was a quick shot, and now they are attending to that net on that side of the field behind starting goalie Tyler Baring. As the officials for today are referee Thomas Sutton, umpire Stephen Murray, field judge Anthony Paranti had a difficult decision there at that end of the field, but they, they called a goal in Rutgers up one to nothing. Goal looks a little worn, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe a couple too many <laughs> practice shots. They put That's why they put the second goal out there when, yeah. when the teams warm up. This looks like the second goal. <laughs> So a slight delay here as it took the Scarlet Knights a little bit, about seven minutes, but they are on the board first. So we're going to take another look here. Again, attacking those short sticks, finds George on the wing. It's a tough angle, but... A really tough angle, and it was quick to, to get by bearing there in goal. He seems pretty sure, though, as soon as, as soon as he let it go, you know? Unless he's just a very good actor. I don't know what kind of, what kind of acting or drama <laughs> program they have at Rutgers. But he gets an A-plus if that one actually didn't go in. Jeff George on the board first, one to nothing. We go back to the X. Joe Francisco and Joe Delasho dueling there. A, Whistle violation in Rutgers will get its second face-off win so far today. And that's big for Rutgers. Talking to their staff this week, you know, they said if they could just muck it up and go 50-50, they'd be happy. But early on, they've got two wins, uh, which is going to be huge for them if, if it, they continue to do that at the X. So look at the freshman Kieran Mullins on the attack unit for the Scarlet Knights. Head coach Brian Brecht really high on Mullen saying even with the loss of Charlam Beatties, even if he's back and healthy in the attack unit, this kid probably still would have seen time as just a freshman here for Rutgers. Skip pass across Jordan. Let that one fly. And I mean seriously fly. Almost over the netting over there in the corner, but it's backed up by Rutgers. And they'll keep possession. Pass in front, Henningberg finishes in front and draws the flag. Rutgers off to a hot start, 2-0. Wow. Wow. I, I think that was Scarpello right there with the assist. This is a great look. Looks right through the heart of the defense. Take a look here, coming out of his dodge. And Henningberg does a nice job of finishing there and staying outside of the crease. Really nice play all the way around by Rutgers' offense. Again, really nice look by Scarpella looking through that defense. And Henningberg just getting to that spot, getting to that lane, showing his stick, uh, making himself available and finishing it. Henningberg's eighth goal of the season. And Rutgers off to a really fast start. A couple of face-off wins, back-to-back -back goals here. Fairfield and a little bit of an early hole. Uh, another chance for Rutgers to win its third straight face-off. And they do, they scoop it up. We saw a different face-off guy there for Fairfield. In number 12, Will Fox, the backup guy getting a run. But Rutgers with the same result. Juke in front, off a helmet. There it is, there it is. Good hustle here by Fairfield, but they give it to Rutgers. 
Looked like Logan Williamson, the long pole, the senior defenseman for Fairfield, had a good beat on it, ran into Jules Hedingberg there towards the end line, and Rutgers gets the backup. It's another opportunity here for the Scarlet Knights. Looking good early. Casey Rose feeds over to the freshman Mullins. Skip pass off a helmet and it will stay Rutgers ball. Rutgers so far has done a really nice job of drawing that slide. Uh, every time they dodge, they're dodging hard, they're drawing attention and then moving it. Shot from way outside. Jeff George a little ambitious. Backed up by the guys in black. First midfield, first attack unit out here for Rutgers. George Rose, Tolliver in the midfield. Henningberg, Murphy, and Mullins at the attack unit. Fairfield already not liking their matchups, going to a zone here early. So watch as Rutgers is going to try to move it on the outside. George is shot, but bearing up to the challenge. The outlet is errant, though, and Rutgers, uh, loose ball. And a chance to go unsettled if they want it. Instead, Henningberg takes his time, and they keep that offensive midfield on. And, and just when you thought Fairfield may have gotten a break, a nice save as they went to the zone defense, a transition error and then a goal. Connor Murphy there on the doorstep, the senior, his fifth of the year. Rutgers is rocking and rolling early. And it starts with the turnover from Tyler Baring. He makes the nice save, like we talked about, in the zone defense. Get the stop, but then they turn it over right away. Not able to get set. And then they're going to find Murphy on the inside of this zone. You know, when you're in a zone defense, the principle is you've got to cover up everything inside. And he's just too open. Makes a nice play. Uh, dodges that, that slide there. Protects his stick and is able to finish it past the goalie Baring. Really pretty finish there for the senior who is really getting an opportunity to fill in now as we have a timeout on the field for Fairfield. He's getting a chance to fill in more than he, he has. He didn't play a lot as a junior, just two starts in eight games last season. But as we mentioned, the, the big storyline for this Rutgers team, the, the injuries to, uh, to, to Adam Charlambides and Christian Trazzolini, two guys that were star players for this Rutgers offense last year and now they have some other pieces filling in and, and so far so good. Yeah, nice depth for Rutgers to be able to replace those guys. Um, talked about it earlier that they're able to score in different kinds of ways. I mean even man up coming into this game, they're two for four so they're, you know, they're operating at 50% right now. Uh, so they're finding other ways to score. Other guys are stepping up um, and if you're Fairfield, Fairfield right now, you need to get, start to get some stops. I liked what they did in the zone, obviously, before that goal they gave up, but on that possession before Barron turned it over uh, on the outlet, I liked what they were doing with the zone. I'd like to see more of that. Get a few stops. It's still very early. It's 3 nothing. They're still in the game. You can't panic. Uh, get a few stops. Get your offense the ball uh, and try to get you know get a goal here, too, and get back in this. Yeah, less than 10 minutes in. You mentioned the faceoff exit. It's a spot where Rutgers actually struggled at times this year. Joe Francisco, just 37% on the season entering this game. Number one in black there for Rutgers. So... Three for three to start so far is a, is a really successful start. And, and I mentioned Will Fox. Looks like he is back down there again for Fairfield. He was a second-team All-CAA guy the last couple of seasons. Lost his starting job to Delasho, but now he's getting a little bit of a run. Fairfield had a good beat on that, and, and we have an injured Scarlet Knight. It is the face-off guy, Joe Francisco, here for Rutgers. And that, that is not good for the Scarlet Knights. They're already down another face-off guy. And Alex Schoen, both a football and lacrosse player, actually a transfer from Syracuse who played football there and transferred to Rutgers to play a little bit of both. He's already out for the year. Francisco, the main face-off guy, down on the field. We're going to take a look at the replay of the face-off here. You don't like to you don't like to assume, but you're grabbing his knee. They're doing the the ACL MCL test, uh, the trainers right now. So it's definitely something with the knee. It looked like it it may have just gotten 
knocked the, the wrong way, not inside out, but side to side. Well, this is a good sign if you can get up. And he's have a little help, but a little bit under his own power, able to hobble off. That's, that's good news for, for the Scarlet Knights. Joe Francisco, the junior from Clark, New Jersey. And you hate to see that, because like you said, he was getting off to such a great start. Doing really well here early on in the game. Getting into a bit of a rhythm. And that'll hurt Rutgers as well as this game goes on, because again, he was doing pretty well here at the outstart. And so yet a, a team that has just been decimated with injuries in the preseason, and now another guy goes down here in game three. Rutgers, you talk to Coach Brian Breck though, it's a next man up mentality for this team, no excuses. They still have the same expectations of making an NCAA tournament, making a run at the Big Ten title, and off to a good start still as they keep possession on the offensive side. Tulliver dances with it, now sends it behind to Henningberg. Well, two man game between Henningberg and George. A little big little, bringing the midfielder behind, getting a short stick, playing behind the goal where they usually don't feel too comfortable. Settled set here for the Scarlet Knights. Looking to add to an early 3-0 lead. George, errant pass, he's trying to find Rose. He got a loose ball, Henningberg, a good beat on it, but he couldn't pick it up. There we go, there we go. And Baring and Fairfield have a chance to clear. Nice stop by Fairfield, did a good job against the picks. We're switching on all picks up top. If you're Rutgers offensively, look for a little slip pick as they're switching on everything pretty early. Try to create some offense with a slip pick. Samuel Murphy able to bring it in for Fairfield. He gets it to the offensive unit, Joe Rodriguez. Guy who plays a little bit of midfield and attack for this Fairfield team. Versatile player, but he loses it. In the substitution game, Rutgers a chance to run. In transition, right down Broadway, Baring makes the save. And that's a huge stop for Baring right there. Rutgers with, the, with this lead, transition opportunity. Whenever a defenseman scores, the other team gets really fired up. So that's a big stop, slows down the momentum, gets his team a possession here. But that's a huge, huge stop from Baring. Alex Bronzo, the pull there for Rutgers in transition. And now he draws the matchup here on the far side. As Fairfield another chance to settle things down. Still scoreless three minutes ago in this first quarter. Fairfield, a team that struggled to score in their first game, losing 15 to three to a Richmond team in the top 20. Came back with a nice offensive performance last week. Beating Bucknell 13 to 12 on the road. This is their home opener. You see Colin Burke, uh, errant pass, had a good defense there, and Burke turns it over. They just look out of sync right now, offensively, even before with the turnover by the box. Just no communication that a guy was coming onto the field. Um, they just look a lot out of sync. Sloppy passes. Uh, they really need to just get settled down uh, and start playing as, as a unit. So Murphy touches it in. Now Jeff George running the show for Rutgers. George, shot, bearing another save. Man, has he been big here the last couple of possessions, keeping Rutgers with just a three goal advantage and another chance to clear. Another chance to get a look at this Fairfield offense who has struggled so far. Swim move by Samuel Murphy. Brings it over midfield. Baring starting to get into a bit of a rhythm. Would like to see Fairfield maybe go a bit more zone because he's playing pretty well right now. Give up some outside shots, let him see him, uh, and keep making some stops. Baring, guy who was first team all CAA last season. Getting him going would be good for Fairfield, but they got to score some at the other end. This is Jake Nosman. 
All the way around the outside of the box. Now to Burke. Back around the outside to Dave Fleming. Fleming with the short stick Mazzone on him. There's not a lot of opportunities here for Fairfield so far. You can see uh, a difference between when Rutgers attacks and when Fairfield attacks. You can tell Rutgers, these guys are going with, with on a mission, trying to get to the goal. And when Fairfield dodges and is trying to create and not going as hard as the Rutgers guys. A chance in front as Burke drew the short stick. A whistle. It looks like it's on Burke and Rutgers will get possession. You had Tolliver on there, an offensive midfielder for Rutgers on the star attackman there for Fairfield. And Fairfield unable to take advantage. And another Rutgers possession. And again, Fairfield's guys just got to go harder. Everything looks like a dummy dodge where, you know, it, it's a dodge, but you're not really trying to go to the goalie, trying to set something else up. Someone's got to take the ball and go and draw a slide. Murphy sends it across to Rose. He couldn't handle it. And it's a Fairfield ball. Didn't look like it was deflected in the middle there. Baring comes out to start the clear for the Stags. But the time runs out on this first quarter clock. Fairfield held scoreless as it was all Scarlet Knights for the first 15 minutes. After 15, Rutgers leads 3-0 over Fairfield. For all the day's lacrosse news and highlights, be sure to check out Lacrosse Now. From up-to-the-minute breaking news to interviews with the sport's top players and coaches, Lacrosse Now, the go-to destination for lax fans. Catch it daily, 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Lax Sports Network. And I will be back in studio tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern time, to do lacrosse now for you tonight, wrapping up all the day's action, including this one as Coach Brian Brecht and Rutgers off to a terrific start, up 3-0 after one. And, and Steve, you pointed th this out in the quarter break, 7-0 advantage for Rutgers in shots on goal so far. Fairfield, just nothing going offensively. Yeah, and I talked about it before. Their guys with the ball have to dodge with a purpose. They have to draw slides. If the slide doesn't come, you've got to dodge hard enough so you can create your own shot. Right now, none of their guys are really going hard. Right here, they get the first faceoff win, obviously, after that injury. That's a good sign for Fairfield because they're obviously going to need a bunch of possessions if that trend you know, keeps up with, with the limited shots. They're going to need more and more possessions to get goals. Yeah, Joe Francisco out for Rutgers, at least for the time being, hobbled off after that last faceoff. So Joe Delasio gets his first faceoff win here for Fairfield, and maybe that can change the tides here in the second quarter for the Stags. Have not heard a lot from this Stags offense, especially the all CAA co-player of the year last year as a freshman, Colin Burke. Inside lacrosse cover guy has, not, has been quiet so far. A little pitch and catch here, shot just high from Kehi. But a, a, a really the first slimmer of a sl sliver of opportunity here for Fairfield. Matt Sharp, the midfielder, dancing towards the top, looking for an opening. Sten sets it behind to Burke. He's got him hung up right here. Want to be patient here. Work for a really good shot. Still waiting, rolls far side. Looks for his spot just off. It looks like maybe a save from Edelman, a little piece, and Rutgers scoops up the loose ball. And this is where Rutgers can be dangerous in transition. Midfielders are not afraid to run with it. Instead, this is Connor Murphy, the attackman, sends it to Henningberg. Spins around the cage. Henningberg shot just wide. 
And sometimes another spot where you have to be careful with Rutgers is they'll leave those defensive midfielders on, and it's almost like a delayed break as they have more offensive opportunities as you have offensive midfielders playing defense. Well, you'll get plenty of slow breaks if you're Rutgers, like you said, late in the possession. Crisscross pass, Henningberg's shot is just kicked away from Baring. The backup, though, great hustle from Henningberg to keep. We're getting back to those slow breaks. Fairfield, from what I'm seeing up here, every time they turn it over, they got three guys running to the box, and that's not a good sign because eventually you are going to get transitioned. They forgot about George, and he makes some pay. Make it 4 nothing, Scarlet Knights, as George capitalizes for his second of the day. And there seems to be a little miscommunication here with George. They were passing him on. Nobody came right there. You, you got to have communication of who's got the guy with the ball. For, you know, first responsibility whenever you're on defense, whatever, it's, whatever sport you're playing is who's got the guy with the ball. You got to communicate that, and that's just too easy, to, even, easy of a play for George. And so back to the face-off effect, something we will certainly watch. Rutgers started really well, and Joe Francisco is actually back out there. He, he had been injured, and it looks like he's back out as there's a flag here. We will get a man-up opportunity. That's a good news for the Scarlet Knights is number one Francisco back out there in black. But Fairfield will have the man up opportunity here. And this is a spot that they've struggled with this year. Only two of 12, operating about 16%. You'd like to see those numbers up. And boy, could they use one right now. Down 4 nothing, but they've won a couple of face-offs in a row. So an opportunity here, a 30-second man up. Joe Francisco, the face-off guy, they got him with a push. And so Fairfield operating. Up a man for 30 seconds. Burke's pass is picked off. Garrett Michaeli able to scoop that one up for Rutgers. A loose ball around midfield. Fairfield scoops it up a yard sale. Big hit. No flag. Oh, there it is. There's the flag. And so now we will get what went a Fairfield man up for 30 is going to go back the other way as Rutgers will have an opportunity with it, at least for some time. Yeah, a loose ball. A lot going on in this mix. I don't mind that hit. I, I think he I think he led with his shoulder. I think it's coming up right here. This is the one they got him on. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit higher than the last one. The first one I liked. I thought that was clean. And you're right, that second one he does come up a little bit and launch himself, you know, with the concussion protocol and the head injuries and in all the sports nowadays they're they're gonna call that. Yeah, Spencer Noonan gets the one minute penalty and so the, man, the 30 second man up had been wiped off. It looks like, or excuse me, two seconds left on the man up for Fairfield. So they'll go five on five for a hot second. And now it's about 55 seconds for Rutgers to have a man up opportunity. And Rutgers has been about 66% this year so far. So I've been operating extremely well on this, on this special team. George. To Mullins, around Jordan, another errant pass here and a man up. We've seen it from both teams now. Baring able to get the clear, and Fairfield now can run off the rest of this 30-second penalty. You don't mind not converting on man up opportunities, but you at least want to use the whole possession, get some looks out of it. Uh, you're not always going to convert, but to just give two sloppy turnovers from both teams, coaches aren't going to be happy when they get into the film room on Monday taking a look at those man ups. That's one you cringe about watching. No matter what the score is of the game, you don't want to go back and watch that in the film room on Monday. And so the penalty has expired. Fairfield back to even. And an opportunity to try to get their first goal of this game. This is Jake Nosman working on the shorty. 
Feeds back out top. High shot. Little ambitious there. But they keep possession here. It's Dave Fleming. A little errant on that shot from the top of the box. Nosman sends behind to Burke. I believe only one shot so far for Burke. It's been quiet. Nice job, Alex. And, and a loose ball here in front. Fairfield trying to scoop it up. They couldn't. They got a whistle. And looks like Fairfield's going to keep in a loose ball situation. Steve, what have you seen with the defense around Colin Burke so far as, as Rutgers has done a pretty good job? Well, I, I think uh, the defenseman, Rex Road, has done a really nice job with his matchup. Matching feet, staying in front, being in good position, not having to – Rutgers hasn't had to slid, slide to him. Uh, so that's going to be big. He, he likes to feed. He likes to look inside when the, when the slide comes. So they haven't had to slide to him. And, again, he's done a nice job defensively staying in his hands and not really giving him too many good opportunities when he does dodge from X. Michael Rexroad has started every game of his college career. He's in his junior season, so he's been there, done that before. Working against the sophomore here, a shot in front. Nosman lost it. Burke able to scoop up the loose ball on the far side. Rexroad all over him. Excuse me, I believe that was Grohl that was all over him. Draws the flag. And another man up opportunity coming here for the Stags. I don't mind the aggressive play. You know, I, I was a guy that took tried to throw a lot of takeaway checks, so I understand it. But you don't want to throw it on the other team's best guy. You, you might want to wait till you get that short stick D midi or that face off guy to take your chance or your opportunity. You know, you're going against the other team's best guy. It's usually pretty tough to hit a check like that, especially over the head. The Rutgers senior Chris Grohl takes the Grohl. penalty. One for a one minute tripping call. So Fairfield. 0 for 1 on the man up so far today, but another opportunity to cut into the 4 0 lead. In the last one, we saw an errant pass picked off by Rutgers. We'll see if they're cleaner this time. Fairfield working out of a 1 3 2 from behind, see if they transition. And just a little off. Alex Wagner couldn't handle that pass from Burke. And Rutgers, a chance to kill the final 30 of the man up. And a chance to go in transition if they really want to. And deflected, and it finds its way past Baring. Oh, man, it's just not Fairfield's first half so far as Rutgers takes the 5 nothing lead. And that was really a, an errant uh, bad pass right here. This pass was going to be a turnover, get picked off. And if you're Fairfield, just look at this pass here. Guy's right in the skip lane. Literally, I think it bounced off his head possibly. Just unlucky. Christian Scarpello gets credit for the goal. Don't think he was shooting. But they all count the same when they make it, make it through. Five nothing start for Rutgers as we have a timeout in the field. And if you are a coach Andy Copeland right now, what are you telling your team in the Fairfield huddle? You haven't scored in the first quarter and a half, and, and they, they look like they're just stagnant, just a little off. Well, they are, but again, it's it's 5 nothing. but there's almost nine minutes left here. Still in the first half, there's plenty of time in the game of lacrosse. You're, you're really never out of it. Uh, you can always score in bunches, so just got to stick with it. Uh, obviously, unfortunate play right there with it bouncing in. They were in the perfect position to pick off that pass, get their offense the ball again, uh, and it goes in. So you got to forget about that play. You've got to move on. you got a face-off opportunity here. You're starting to get going at the X a little bit. Offensively, they've had a few, uh, you know, a couple of good looks here now. They're starting to get into a bit of a rhythm. So just stick with the plan. It's still early in the game. You get one or two goals, and you're right back in this thing. So it was 8 9 nothing. It's a little bit of a different conversation, but 5 is something you can come back from. You're at home. Um, so stick with the plan. Keep playing. And with Barry playing as well as he is, he's going to give you an opportunity. He'll keep you in the game and give you some you know, opportunities to get some goals and get back into it. The, the good news for Fairfield is in Tyler Bearing. You, you have a freshman that lives up a goal like that, down 5 nothing in goal, maybe a different story. This is a senior who's been there, done that, a first-team all-league guy. You certainly don't worry about him too much. 
and we will see what they can do with the face-off X. As we saw Joe Francisco back in there for Rutgers, he drew the penalty after he had been injured previously in the first quarter. Now we have a long pole in there for Rutgers taking the face-off. Looks like number five, Charlie Horning in there. So different looks for Joe Delasho at the faceoff to go against in Fairfield. Able to win it, Delasho pushes it back to Nosman. But no real opportunities in transition as Fairfield wants a timeout, talk things over here on offense. And offensively, not a lot of shots, not a lot of great opportunities. What do you try to do if you're Fairfield? I think offensively, they haven't been able to win any of their matchups. No, nobody's beat anybody, just gone to the goal and been able to draw a slide or get a look. So they're going to have to get creative, set some picks, do some off-ball stuff, uh, find ways to get guys open and get their hands free. Because, again, they're not winning those matchups when they dodge and go to the goal. So they got to get creative here and do some things off-ball, do some things with picks, maybe run some plays out of this timeout here to try to get some shots and get some guys open. Why call that timeout? You have 12 seconds left on the man down for Fairfield. Why call that timeout there? That's a good question. I, I don't like the timeout there. I think uh, you get them unsettled. You can run it out for 12 seconds. Now coming out of this timeout, Rutgers could get aggressive double pole, lefty-righty matchup, try to funnel that guy with the ball onto the inside. So I don't like the timeout there. Because, I, again, I think you give Rutgers an opportunity here maybe to get aggressive, which we know they like to play fast-paced and aggressive and, and try to get a turnover here. So, But that's why he's the coach. I'm sure he's got a plan. That's why I'm up here. He knows his team better than we do, head coach Andy Copeland in his ninth year at Fairfield. So Rutgers off to a really good start offensively. This is a offense that was top 10, 15 in the country last year. We didn't know what to expect coming into this season. You lose Adam Charlambides and Christian Trazzolini to injury for the year. You lose a face-off guy in Alex Schoen. So a lot of pieces and new pieces Rutgers trying to fill in in this, in this year's team, but so far so good. They put up 16 goals in their first game, another 12 last week in the win over Army, and five so far in the first quarter and a half. But it's Fairfield operating right side. Nosman's shot is saved by Edelman. And Rutgers, we're back to even strength now, but able to get an offensive possession here. And I apologize. That was my mistake. Henningberg couldn't complete it. And another Aaron shot. Man, Connor Murphy and Jules Henningberg both want those back. Fairfield actually had the man up opportunity coming out of that timeout, so I do like the timeout, <laughs> Coach. Good decision. Excuse me, I, I, tri I tripped you up there so as, it. as Tyler Baring draws a whistle and Jules Henningberg, and they'll look to clear here for Fairfield. And another look at, at these two great opportunities. Just couldn't handle that first pass, was out of his stick before he even shot it, and same deal there. He, he had more time than he thought. Could have really cradled that ball, brought it all the way in, and quick stick. They would have had a, a wide open net. Just rushed it a little bit, both guys. You see that open net, and you get all excited. But instead, it stays 5 nothing Rutgers. Fairfield still looking for goal number one of the day. Pass to the far side. Shot to score. Joe Rodriguez getting the stags on the board. Finally, they make it 5-1. to one. And you're going to see Rodriguez right off the pass. He's going to get right into his dodge. He's not going to waste any time. He recognizes that the defenseman maybe is a little bit late getting out to him. And watch this. This nice little face dodge gets right aggressive, goes right by him, and finishes it. Again, nice recognition by Rodriguez, realizing the defenseman was a little late getting at him, not in great position, and able to face dodge and go right by him. How big of a weight off your shoulders is that if you're Fairfield? Got to get the first one. Right? As soon as you get the first one, you get a little bit more confidence. Uh, you start to get going. Obviously, the momentum, the energy starts to come throughout the whole entire team. So once you get that first one, you get over that hump, uh, and now hopefully for Fairfield, they can just start rolling. There's a good crowd here today as well at Fairfield. You, you're at home, home opener, nice day. You, you feel like you, you want to get everybody into it, give everybody an opportunity and a reason to cheer. But on the ensuing faceoff, Rutgers gets the violation, so Mazzone scoops it up, and Rutgers a chance to take a little momentum back. Really a two-goal swing there as she had the open net opportunity for Rutgers, and 
Fairfield able to come down and get goal number one. This is Connor Murphy, one of the guys with that open net opportunity he'd like to have back. And he works towards the middle of the, the box. His pass couldn't be handled by Mullins, a race for it. Out of bounds and Fairfield. Another offensive chance. And just a nice, simple lift check by Andrew Murrow. Just a nice, simple play. You don't have to throw all these crazy checks. Gets to the bottom hand as he's about to pass and, and disrupts the whole play and causes a turnover. Simple plays like that, you know, add up in a game. And so Fairfield slowing things down here as we've seen them do throughout this first half. Getting those offensive midfielders and players onto the field. And a chance to really keep the momentum swinging in their favor here. This is Nosman. Feeds back out top to Dave Fleming. Rolls near side. A bit of an opening, but sends it towards X. Nice pass intercepted by Grohl. Excuse me, not Grohl. That's number 22, Rex Roden. Really nice play by the junior. And Fairfield, or excuse me, Rutgers. Just using that six foot pole, trying to put it in a passing lane. Sometimes you get lucky, it goes right into your stick. Murphy over to Mullins. The freshman working. Deflected, kicked, somebody made a, made a save on that. Baron collects. Nice stop there for Fairfield. And they walk it into the box to complete the clear. Jack Brennan out there, the midfielder. And man, would a goal here be big as we tick under five minutes to go in the first half. Rutgers putting a lot of pressure out here on Nosman. Now it's Matt Sharp dodging far alley. Around the top, Nosman. Now Kehi. Rutgers defense has been tough all game long. They've done a really nice job of their slide and recovery. Every time Fairfield starts to dodge down the alley, they're bringing that double to a certain point and their recovery has been very quick. If you're Fairfield, as soon as you see that slide coming, you've got to move the ball on and try to catch them in the middle of their rotation. The Fairfield Dodgers are holding on to the ball too long. So as soon as you see that slide come, you need to turn to the outside and, and run it back up top uh, and try to catch these guys as they rotate. Christian Mazzone, the short stick defensive midfielder, made a nice play on that and Chris Grohl able to scoop it up. And Rutgers a possession. You may recognize that name, Mazzone, if you're a fan of college lacrosse. His brother Will currently playing at Army. As George rolls towards the near side, his pass a little loose, but scooped up by Murphy. My models are and hard. Here comes Rose, saved by Baring. Nice loose ball scooped up by Fairfield, triple teamed, but Baring is there for an outlet. Nice job, Rutgers attacking from the wing getting across the top of the field. If you're, if you're Fairfield, you've got to drive that guy down below, start to get him going towards X. You never want to have a guy sweeping across because as he comes across the field, he's seeing more and more of that six by six net. You want to take that angle away and drive that guy towards X behind the goal. This is Alex Wagner, the freshman, number 29 in white. 228 goals, 92 assists in his high school career. Sixth leading scorer in Pennsylvania State history. He's scoreless today, but he certainly can, can fill him up. Shot in front, saved. Rebound by Fairfield. Man down, ball is down, and it's scooped up by Rutgers. Fairfield. 
Fairfield was looking for that, that loose ball push or even a 30-second push with possession. Didn't get it. Thought they may have called that, but they didn't. In front, shot is wide from Murphy. As we tick towards two minutes to go in the first half, Rutgers still holding on to a four-goal advantage, five to one. And they've got their superstar, Jules Henningberg, with it. Jeff George, Henningberg, taking their time here. Fairfield playing that zone again. So you'll see them, they'll be passing guys on as they carry. Got to communicate when you pass it on right here. Quick passing here for Rutgers. Rose gets into it, bounce shot goes. Midfielder giving Rutgers another five goal lead. And you can't get dodged when you're playing in a zone because there's no help coming. Rutgers goal Watch as he splits 20, the Jason double Rose. team here. Two guys converging on. You can't let him split that double team. And again, there's no help coming in a zone. It's not like when you're in a man-to-man -man defense when the slide is ready to rock and come to you in the zone. If you can beat those two guys, you, you get a nice opportunity like they just did there with Rose. So. Fairfield, you gotta, you gotta be a little frustrated when you're in the zone, you can't get dodged. Casey Rose's fourth goal of the season. In his first year is really a full-time starter. Started nine of 16 games last year. The redshirt sophomore from Salt Lake City, Utah. Not a usual hotbed, but seeing what the Utah Utes MCLA program has done out there. They're off to a hot start as Rutgers is as well. Spinning through traffic is Kieran Mullins, the freshman, banging all around. Rutgers coach Brian Brecht wants a timeout to Time talk out. things over with 115, 116 to go in this first half. Good timeout by coach. You know, 116 left, you guys in the middle of the field getting hacked and whacked by a bunch of guys. The last thing you want to do is have a turnover at the top of the box, create some transition and opportunity for Fairfield. Call the timeout, you've got the nice lead here. Bring your offensive guys in, maybe run some clock, set up something, set up maybe a matchup or a play that you like and, and try to get one uh, here at the end and go in seven to one and a half. For Rutgers, we haven't seen the uh, shot clock been put, be put on at all in this game. How quick, 116 to go, how quick did the referees possibly trigger it on or can Rutgers maybe hold for one here? I think you could hold for one. You could definitely fake it with a few dummy dodges. Maybe even, you know, you see teams now, they, they They'll throw one over the top of the net, have backup. You see a lot of teams doing that. So to the average fan, it looks like a shot, but someone that really knows the cross, um, you know, sees right through that. But they'll be able to get, I think, hold to the last second shot. You look for them to maybe start attacking really with about 20, 15 to 20 seconds left and really start to go and then maybe, um, you know, run their play at that point. And again, try to uh, play for that last shot here before half. We take a look at the Rutgers huddle. Head coach Brian Brecht going for his 100th career win in this one. Off to a good start, up 6-1. to one. Started his head coaching career at Siena College. Was there for seven seasons. 60-plus wins there. Then came over to Rutgers. This is sixth season here. 99-92 overall as a head coach. This is a big opportunity for him to score that 100th career win. Really a testament to, to everything he's done in, at both the Siena and Rutgers program so far. He's done a real nice job since he's been at Rutgers. He's really turned this program around, has landed some nice recruits. Uh, and you can just tell the athleticism on this team, the way they get up and down. Um, as a former Syracuse guy, program that kind of created transition lacrosse. I really appreciate the way these guys play, uh, the aggressive style which they play with. So they're, they're fun to watch. And again, he's done a really nice job since he's been at Rutgers. Rutgers was on the outside looking in at the NCAA tournament last year. Maybe the first team out. A lot of team people thought they maybe should have been in. Rutgers saying that's not really their calling card this year, but it's certainly a motivating factor. As with 50 seconds to go, they have one more chance at this, trying to extend this lead to its largest of the game if they could get it to 7-1. to one. 40 seconds, still no shot clock on, so they'll pretty much be able to run this thing out. Tolliver takes it behind. 
Now Murphy with it. 30 seconds to go. Now look for them to really initiate the offense. Again, like I said, about 20 seconds. They got the short stick behind, taking that matchup, setting the pick. Now they're going to get into that set into their offense and try to make, you know, make a, a last second play here. Murphy with 10. Rutgers a little lost here. Murphy near side and opening, and he finds the corner. Oh, that one hurts if you're Fairfield. Rutgers, its largest lead of the game at six. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. I'm not sure if he drew it up that way. They did look a little confused there on, on who they wanted to attack. For Murphy again, they've got two guys behind, a little, a big little set. No help from Fair, Fairfield. You've got to recognize when you're on defense and there's two or three seconds left, it's short time. You've got to slide to anything, any type of dodge like that, knowing that it's going to be very difficult to get a pass off and, you know, and another shot. So... Fairfield fell asleep there in the, in the last few seconds. Someone's got to come and help uh, and slide and make Murphy a passer in that in that op, you know in that um, opportunity there for, for Rutgers. So Fairfield won the final faceoff, but not enough time to do much of anything. And we go into the half, a six-goal lead for Rutgers at seven to one. The Scarlet Knights really able to do just about everything they wanted to do offensively, as we will. Get a chance to talk to head coach Brian Brecht here before before the halftime horn. It's Rutgers, the 15th ranked team in the country, looking really, really good so far. We have Coach Brecht down on the sideline. Coach Travis Eldridge, Steve Panarelli here in the booth. What did you like about what you guys did so far? Obviously a good start up six. I loved how relentless we were on ground balls. Uh, I thought we did a good job going defense to offense. Defense is doing a great job with nuggets and knocking down the ball, picking up ground balls. Max is doing a hell of a job in the, in the goal, and uh, I love the way we're running in between the lines. Coach, i got to ask you about your defense. Playing really well right now, only giving up one goal, not too many shots. Talk about how they're playing as a team and, and maybe some things that we can look for up here. Very smart, intelligent, mature group. you got a senior in Chris Grohl. you got a three-year three, three -year starter uh, in uh, Rex and, and a guy in Bronzo who's uh, played in every game in his, uh, in his time here. So a uh, you know, very mature veteran group who is uh, playing well together and know each other's strengths and, and how to you know, uh, you know, help each other out when they need to. And it's a group that allowed just one goal the first half. Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Appreciate it. So our score at the half here at Rafferty Stadium. Rutgers 7, Fairfield 1. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with the second half. But first, for an update on everything happening on this busy Saturday in College Lacrosse, let's send it back to the LSN Broadcast Center. Welcome back here to Fairfield. Your score at the half, Rutgers 7, Fairfield 1. We are now joined by the head coach of the Stags, Andy Copeland. Now, coach, obviously not the first half you would have liked. What would you like to do more offensively in the second? And I believe we have some technical difficulties. Coach, can you hear us? And I don't think Coach Copeland can hear us there as we get ready for the second half. As Coach Copeland, as Coach Copeland's crew tries to turn things around here in the second, down by six. As we take a look at some of the first half stats, Steve, 23 to nine shots in favor of the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, I, th I think that's the biggest stat that you'll take a look at right there. Everything else is pretty even. You know, obviously Fairfield, um, you know, making some saves, keeping them in the game could be a lot worse actually, you know, minus a few of those saves. But Rutgers has just been dominant. You know, they've, they've played really well offensively. They've been getting out in transition, creating opportunities there defensively. We talked about it in the first half. Their slide and recovery has been unbelievable. Just haven't given Fairfield any breathing room at all here in the first half. Rutgers started off with a great face-off lead, won the first three or so. It has evened out since as Joe Delasho looks to change that for the Stags. He's back out there at the X. Joe Francisco, he had been injured in that first half. Back out there for Fairfield. Violation on Delasho. So the Scarlet Knights get another face-off win, and they'll start with it in the second half. It's got some sun here, Steve. Fog is burned off. Beautiful day for some lacrosse here at Fairfield. Still February, right? Yeah, we, we think so. <laughs> Feels like mid-April. As a shot is saved by Baring, able to control the rebound. His eighth save so far today. 
big save right there, one on one, point blank range. Again, Fairfield defensively, just they just look a step behind Rutgers right now and, and Rutgers offensive guys and their Dodgers. They just gotta do a better job of, of really dictating where those Dodgers are going. They're letting them get to the middle of the field and the slides, the slides when they're coming, they've gotta come physical with the body. Looks like they're playing stick and, and they're running by that second guy. It's not a good sign if you're Fairfield. When you're not producing on the other end of the field, how hard is that as a defensive player to continue to match up with your guy? possession after possession well you have to you know if you if you have any type of pride uh, and respect you've got to play even that much harder what happens though because Rutgers has played so much offense you just wear a defense down with that amount of time of possession uh, and with the way they play they play with that fast pace they're always coming at you so you need your offense to control the ball a little bit get long possessions uh, and you need them to help you out a little bit too Wagner had a good look at that one but his shot sailed high now Nico Panapinto working first little bit of action we've seen from Panapinto here today. So maybe some changes here for Fairfield. This is Joe Rodriguez. Back over to Panapinto, a senior from Needham, Massachusetts. Shot and a score. That'll get things going. Matt Sharp right on the mark, 7-2. And Sharp's able to find just a small crease in that Rutgers defense. Rutgers all day has done a nice job winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups. But right here, he's able to beat his man. And it's a tough place to slide to. This goal line extended. It's a tough place to help. Where does it come from? Does it come from the crease? Does it come from behind? Uh, but right there, Sharp, again, does a nice job. Gets underneath his man. And is able to create just enough of an angle to finish that shot. And so... A much better start here for the Stags in half number two. An opportunity for a face-off win. They scoop it up. It's Will Fox back in there for the Stags. And Fairfield another possession. Fairfield's had their most success offensively dodging off the wing. I'd like to see them continue continued attack. Uh, it's put Rutgers in a tough spot of, of where the slide is coming from and where the help's coming from. I would like to see their midfielders attack those short stick defensemen, bring them to the wings, uh, and keep attacking from that spot in the field and see if they can create some more offense. So Fairfield going to work. This is Colin Burke, the standout sophomore, feeds it across. And he sets a pick, wanted a shot, thought about it, instead kicks it back out. Burke, five goals, two assists. Quiet so far today. Feed in front to Alex Wagner. The Frosh makes it back to back for the Stags. Well, we didn't get an opportunity to talk to Coach Copeland after the half there, but obviously he said something in the locker room because these guys are playing with much more energy here on the offensive side. Again, dodging from that wing spot. It's been a good place for them so far here today. And right there, Wagner does a good job of making himself available, cutting to the ball, following the slide, uh, and finishing that right-handed. But again, attacking from that wing position is putting Rutgers in a tough spot and created a lot of opportunities here for, for Fairfield. And the first point of the game for Colin Burke for Fairfield, that standout sophomores. It's Joe Francisco for Rutgers able to win the faceoff. And that's good news for Fairfield. You talk to Andy Copeland, He's not going to hide it. Burke is the guy who stirs the drink for this this Fairfield offense. Because they have a good, solid ride here after the faceoff win by Rutgers. Eventually brought over Kieran Mullins, able to get it into the box. And our first look at Rutgers offense here in the second half. That first midfield unit out there for the Scarlet Knights. Number three, Chad Tolliver. 20, Casey Rose. 11, Jeff George. George, a couple of goals in the first half. Rose with one as well. So that midfield unit, three goals in the first half. Nearly half of the production. This is an attackman. Kieran Mullins, the freshman. Going to work down low. Shot skims off the turf. A race towards the end line. 
But it's won by Rutgers. They keep. And a good job right there defensively by Fairfield. Not letting him get top side short stick matchup. Did a really nice job. Almost played like a pole right there. He's going to get attacked again. This is Mullins. The freshman sends it behind to Henning Burke. Just one goal for Jules in the first half. That's about all they needed from him. Loose ball scooped up by Henning Burke. Right place, right time. But he loses it out the back. Fairfield causing the turnover. It's amazing what a few goals will do. You can tell they're playing with, with much more passion right now and, and a better tempo defensively. Guys are playing a little bit more aggressive. You, you can see them getting into their guys uh, and forcing them to go to certain spots. And you can just tell there's a different energy about Fairfield right now. And so here they come, looking to make it three in a row. Charlie Horning touches it in, gets it over to Matt Sharp. They take their time getting some offensive personnel on the field. This Fairfield team had that ugly one in game one, and, and you have to think Coach Andy Copeland mentioned something about that game and saying, hey, guys, we don't want that to happen again here. Yeah, they definitely responded here after that first half. Seven to one, coming out, you know, having two goals right away. Definitely a different story from what you talked about in that first game against Richmond. Here's Colin Burke. Spins towards the middle. Feeds in front shot just wide. Good chance for Panapinto, but backed up by Fairfield. And you can see the attention that Burke draws. He, he wasn't really dodging that hard, but just the fact that he was up top, isolated, going one on one. Rutgers fell asleep off ball, looking to help to him already. But you got to cover your guy first before you can start to think about sliding and rotating. Panapinto, a guy who got a start in the first game against Richmond, did not play against Bucknell, but maybe a little change of pace here for Fairfield with some new pieces in on offense. Is that wing play again? Panapinto swims, kicks it back out to Burke. Over to Sharp, shot off the post. And Grohl able to scoop up a key ground ball and he'll look to go in transition. And here's one of those guys who's dangerous, defensive midfielder Christian Mazzone. Feeds back to Grohl. He wants one. Shot is saved by Baring. Baring's done a nice job today, making the saves he's supposed to make uh, and then making a few one-on-ones and some big saves as well, really keeping them in this game. If you didn't have that type of goal, that type of performance, you know, this game could be out of hand already. Done a really nice job here today. Baring's 10th save of the game. He had a double-digit save game last week against Bucknell, and he's been up to the task again here. Fairfield still within four, despite Rutgers really dominating that first half. I like the adjustment that Coach Copeland's made here with Fairfield. Again, I've talked about it before. Dodging from the wing, but bringing Burke up top from behind the goal uh, has definitely created some bit of a matchup problem with, with Rutgers as well, but there's a, a turnover in the substitution game. A little bit of a hiccup there is an offsides call. Mazzone feeds, shot is kicked out for Mullins. The race is won by Fairfield. Some of the Scarlet Knights fans in attendance <laughs> less than pleased. I'm surprised they didn't agree with that call. Yeah, shocker, right? Can't really tell the difference in the stands because of the similarity in colors between Fairfield and Rutgers, but you can tell when they make, they make calls that fans expect to go a certain way. Oh, yeah, and you can tell the difference for sure. <laughs> and so... Once again, an opportunity here for Fairfield to make it three straight, further cut into this Rutgers lead. About midway through this third quarter. Dave Fleming working. Back and down. Now feeds to Horning. Spins, and he lost it. Loose ball scooped up by Rutgers. Roll another big ground ball there for the Scarlet Knights. Christian Scarpella brings it in. He already has a goal in this game in transition. Instead, Scarlet Knights going to set things up. Under seven minutes to go in the third.
This Rutgers team looking to get Brian Brecht his 100th career win. They're going to get to 3-0 on the season. Coming off a year where they just missed out on the NCAA tournament. A lot of people thought they should have been in. Had two wins over Hopkins last season. This year, high expectations in Piscataway as Rutgers looks to get to 3-0 here. Up 7-3 on Fairfield. George wanted some, a little high. Looking for his third goal of the game, but it's backed up by the Scarlet Knights. George at it again, feeds Tolliver, took his eye off it. And a loose ball around midfield. Scooped ahead by Fairfield, but Grohl again there to scoop up a ground ball. His third straight there for, Scarlet, for the Scarlet Knights. Fairfield has struggled all day getting out into transition. You've, you've seen a bunch of sloppy turnovers. Uh, it happened early in the game with Baring overthrowing some uh, somebody uh, on the outlet. So they've struggled all day trying to get out. That was a good opportunity right there. They, they hooked that pass up. They've got a nice four on three fast break. They just haven't been able to hook up those passes and create some transition. Instead, it's Henningberger shot, but Baring again. Save number 11. Man, where would Fairfield be without Tyler Baring today? They'd be losing by a lot more. That's where, that's where they would be. Joe Rodriguez raced in and now a set offense for the Stags. Down four, under five minutes to go in the third. Three different goal scorers so far for Fairfield. Rodriguez, the freshman Alex Wagner, and Matt Sharp. This is Nico Panapinto. Back to Rodriguez. Draws the slide. Now to Burke. Burke shot wide. But right there is Rodriguez. Once again, Fairfield chance to score three straight to start the half. Wagner, skip pass across. Horning, drew plenty of attention, gets to Burke. Rolling, feet in front, off the pipe! Rodriguez was robbed, but Fairfield keeps. Burke at it again. And if you're Fairfield, that's a shot you've got to bury. It doesn't get much easier than that. Burke does a nice job, again, of looking off and then finding that guy on the inside. Again, he draws so much attention when the ball's in his stick. You can see all the Rutgers guys are just staring at him uh, and losing their guys on the inside. Horning, back to Burke. Feet in the middle, squeeze it in. Off the pipe again, it looked like. <laughs> Another great look from Burke from behind. Done, doing a really nice job so far in the second half. Trying to get his offensive guys going, but they've got to finish for him. He, he, his bearing scoops it up in the other crease and has no idea where the ball is coming from. Eventually it's scooped up and a transition chance. Pass couldn't be completed, scooped up. Wagner shot is saved by Edelman. Back and forth we go. Fairfield knocks that one out, Rutgers keeps. And after that last shot that went off the pipe, Colin Burke just kind of looked to the sky saying, what do I have to do? <laughs> It's a good sign if you're Fairfield, though. You're starting to get some good shots, really good looks. Guys are getting open on the inside. The offense is doing a much better job in this second half of finding guys on, on, in the middle and, again, creating opportunities. Really good opportunity for Rutgers, but it found the side of the cage. But Fairfield couldn't scoop up that loose ball. Instead, it goes over the end line. So Rutgers bailed out a little bit there, keeps. They haven't scored yet in this third quarter. It's still a four-goal advantage. Jules Henningberg. His shot couldn't get all the way through. Deflected. S still couldn't be scooped up by Fairfield. A race for it. 
sloppy here towards the end of the third. Rutgers once again wins the ground ball battle. We heard Coach Breck talk about it at halftime. It's been big here. And that's a ground ball you've got to come up with if you're Fairfield. You get a great opportunity. Again, they had another chance there to be out and running, creating maybe a possibly a four on three. They just couldn't come up with the ground ball. In a game like this, when you're trying to come back, every possession is so crucial and you can't give up opportunities like that with ground balls. Another great defensive play here for Fairfield, but another loose ball and Rutgers comes away with it. Scarlet Knights having one of those days where the ball just seems to find their stick. They're putting themselves in good opportunities and good positions. And under a minute to go in the third, maybe they hold for one here. I think they're showing their athleticism too. Just, just out athleting some of these guys from Fairfield, beating them to ground balls. And even when you think, you know, Fairfield comes up and then they make a check just by being all over these guys. And so Fairfield finally able to get the ball, bring it over midfield, 37 seconds to go in the, first, in the third quarter. Transition chance, nobody wants it, so 30 seconds to go. Fairfield's gonna have to hurry if they wanna get these offensive guys on. And so they have them on, 15 seconds to go, they gotta go out in front. Nosman with under 10. Shot high. Saved by Edelman. And with three seconds, Edelman will set it to the middle of the field and that'll do it for our third quarter. Fairfield, the only team to score in the third. They got two, but they still trail by four. Rutgers with a 7-3 lead entering the final 15. Today's winner will be able to go pick up their share behind the ticket. Tune in to Lacrosse Now Face Off as LSN analyst Josh Hawkins and Chris Marshall go toe to toe, debating and dissecting the biggest stories in the game, the hottest takes on the hottest topics. Lacrosse Now Face Off, Thursday through Monday, right here on LSN. We got 15 more minutes on the clock. Travis Eldridge, Steve Panarelli back with you here at Fairfield. Rutgers did not score in that third quarter, but it didn't really matter much. Fairfield unable to take advantage, and they have a 7-3 lead heading into the final 15 minutes. Steve, what did you make of the third quarter for the Scarlet Knights as Fairfield was able to make a little bit of a run? Yeah, Fair, uh, Rutgers came out a little sleepy there. They, they got away from what they did in the first half. Offensively, guys weren't dodging as hard as they were, weren't dodging with a purpose like they did in the first half. And give credit to Fairfield, they responded. They came out of halftime, you know, and, and pun punched Rutgers right in the mouth there, tried to get back into this game. Keys for Fairfield here, got to win some faceoffs, got to get stops, and they've got to finish their opportunities. Offensively, it's starting to flow for them. They're getting good looks. They just haven't been able to capitalize. If they could do those three things, they've got a shot to get back into this game. The face-off game been relatively even here. A win from Fairfield, so they have a chance to start with it. Will Fox getting the win, and we've seen a couple of face-off guys for Fairfield here today. Delasho seen some time. Fox has seen some success here in the second half. That's a big win here for Fairfield. And as we've seen all game long, getting the offensive subs onto the field for the Stags. Rutgers more often, more willing to play in transition. Fairfield, a little bit more methodical. Fairfield using an umbrella set. One guy behind, five guys in front of the goal. Guys popping off the crease. Dead center off of dodges, creating that two-man game off the wing, setting some picks. I like what they've done here in the second half offensively. Here comes Horning. Draw some help. Kicks it over to Matt Sharp. And it'll be Horning to take it behind to X. Working against Scarpello there. Here's Nico Panapinto. Juke. Shot didn't get through. Edelman able to come out of the crease and scoop it up. And here comes Rutgers with their transition style. Here's Mazone. Feeds over, extra pass to Henningberg, and he slows it up. Good decision 
nothing was there. And a good job by Fairfield of rotating the defense and stopping that four on three break. Certainly if you're Rutgers, no need to force things. As they get those offensive midfielders on, Jeff George handling the ball top the box, already a pair of goals today. Now Murphy, pass around the horn to Henningberg. As Rutgers pretty content to look for a good shot. Good defense, and Henningberg just tossed that one away. You know, if the ref says it was a shot. Not sure if uh, the fans here at Fairfield thought it was a shot. I, I thought it was a shot. Not a good shot, but it was a shot. So Henningberg sails one high, and Rutgers keeps possession. Casey Rose, he's got a goal as well. George and Rose, a trio, and the shot clock is now on for Rutgers. 30 seconds, gets up on Cage. George shoots one just high. Shot clock stays at 18. I think Coach Breck has a lot of trust in his defense. He's okay with playing this style of offense here in the fourth quarter. He likes what he sees on that defensive side. Running some clock. Shot is saved. Bearing able to stop a laser, but the outlet a little loose again. Fairfield's got to track it down. Sharp there able to scoop it up. So another slightly errant outlet pass there from Bearing, but Fairfield able to still scoop it up, get an offensive set. I think it's a little too early to take uh, your foot off the gas. It's hard, you know, if a team starts to come back, it's hard to turn it back on, you know. So I, if, if I'm Rutgers, you know, keep playing offense. They, they had so many good looks in the first half. They really were having their way with this Fairfield defense. And it looks like the whole entire second half, they've been kind of content with running clock uh, and not really working the way they worked in the first half. What do I know? I mean, it's been working for them. They're still winning the game here. But like I said, it's hard to turn it back on, especially if Fairfield can make a little bit of a comeback and they have to score late in the game. Mullins dances out a little bit of trouble to Rose, spins, feeds in front. Murphy goes top shelf for the finish. Rutgers on the board finally in the second half, back up to a five goal advantage. Take another Rutgers look at that goal one. Is third goal and Fairfield just, just kind of sleeping off ball a little bit. Losing Murphy, coming from behind. Uh, just a simple play. I think, you know, they played a lot of defense here, so maybe give, you know, credit some of it to that. But nice job by Rutgers creating that dodge off the top. Uh, and then Murphy coming from behind and finishing right-handed. Murphy's second goal of the game. As there's a loose ball off the faceoff. Ref are going to slow up Fairfield and now lets him go as Fairfield will get possession down 8-3 now. And all those opportunities to get back in this game, now they got to answer Rutgers' goal. Excuse me, that was Murphy's third goal of the game. Hat trick for the senior from Clifton Park, or excuse me, from Clifton, Virginia. Also won a state soccer championship in high school. Fairfield, Burke took his eyes off it. This has not been one of his best games and dancing out of a little bit of trouble is the senior girl. They've all just been out of sync, you know, in some kind of way during stretches of this game. They've looked good at times, uh, but as, a, as an overall unit, just out of sync, guys maybe forcing the ball when they're not supposed to, and the guys just not being ready when passes come. Henningberg shot couldn't get through. On the other side, it's scooped up by Matt Borda. Fairfield a chance to go if they want. 
Spinning down and losing it is Fairfield. It's scooped up by the Scarlet Knights. Back and forth we go, though. Another turnover and another chance for Fairfield. As things go a little unsettled. Charlie Horning touches it in. And Fairfield takes a timeout about midway through this final quarter. Timeout, Fairfield. So with eight minutes and 23 Fairfield seconds to go, Rutgers a five-goal advantage. We'll be back March with the rest here on Live Sports Network. Welcome back here to Fairfield. Travis Eldridge, Steve Panarelli with you. 8.23 left to go in this one. Rutgers been relatively quiet offensively in the second half. Just one goal, but still with a five-goal advantage, 8-3. The Scarlet Knights looking to get their head coach, Brian Brecht, his 100th career victory and looking to get to 3-0, the 15th ranked team in the country. But it'll be Fairfield with the ball. And Steve, we've seen Fairfield be methodical and, and take their time offensively. With eight minutes left, down by five. Does that change? It's tough for a team like that to, to speed it up, I think. By nature, they are methodical. I think they like to play possession game, long possessions. They're not built to score fast. I, I think if the roles were reversed and Rutgers was down by five, they'd have a much better opportunity to come in because of plays like this where they can get out and transition and manufacture some goals that way. It's going to be hard for Fairfield. They're not set up that way. Scarpello with the play leading to Henningberg, and it's just kicked high. Stays Scarlet Knights ball though as the Black Knight or Scarlet Knights are able to back it up. You look at the defensive midfielders for Rutgers. Christian Scarpello made the one play at the other end, already has a goal. Big game for him, big game for George so far with a couple. He has it now. Dishes off for Kieran Mullins, the freshman without a goal today. Dances and sends behind. Hennenberg, back to George. Looking for his third, just high. So Henningberg goes back to work for Rutgers. Now they get that full offensive midfield, the first midfield unit on. Nice play there for Fairfield, able to cause a turnover. Transition chance if they want it. And instead, still down five under seven minutes to go. They're going to take their time here. And Steve, is, is it too late to take your time here, or do you, do you still have some time down five? No, they've got to get going with, with the way they've played offense here today with only having, you know, three goals and we're, and we're halfway through the fourth here. They've got to get going. But like I said before, I don't know if they're built for that. I don't know if they're able to play that way. Feed in front, shot from Fleming wide, but backed up there by Panapinto. And we've got a Rutgers timeout here on the field with 6.20 to go. Brian Brecht wants to talk things over. We'll step aside for a second. We'll be back here on Lack Sports Network. Rutgers with an 8-3 lead. Welcome back here to Fairfield. A nice afternoon for some lacrosse in the 50s. The sun has come out here, Steve, and the fans enjoying it. Scarlet Knights fans enjoying it a little bit more. Rutgers with an 8-3 lead with 6.20 to go in this one. The story of the game has been Rutgers capitalizing on some good opportunities on offense, and Fairfield's offense has just been relatively non-existent. Yeah, and we've talked about you know Fairfield struggling offensively. But give credit to Rutgers' defense, too. We haven't yeah. talked enough about those guys. Played really well here uh, so far today. All their slides have been crisp. They've gone at the right time. They've really dictated to Fairfield of where they wanted their Dodgers to go and force them into bad angles uh, and bad spots on the field. So give a lot of credit to his Rutgers defense. These guys are flying around and playing really well as a unit. A little sense of urgency here for 
The Stags, under six minutes to go down five. Couple of early shots. We have not seen that from this offense as Panapinto works it around to Fleming. And interesting to notice, no Colin Burke on the field here for Fairfield, their superstar sophomore, out of the game at the moment. Horning, back to Fleming. Wines, fires wide, backed up there by Panapinto. Along with a couple other guys here for Fairfield, we'll see if it pays off for head coach Andy Copeland. Nosman lost it, scooped ahead. There by Rutgers, and here they come. Kieran Mullins able to slide his way out of a little bit of trouble in another offensive set as we tick towards five minutes to go in this one. Rutgers still with a five-goal lead. And you mentioned that Rutgers defense. Garrett Michaeli there able to scoop that one forward. Chris Grohl has been all over the place. Scarlet Knights, an easy save there for Tyler Baring. Coach Breck's not going to be happy with that shot, you know, being the situation that it is under five. You're kind of fading away and falling down as you come into that shot. It was pretty early in the possession. Not a shot that Coach Brecht, guy who's going to win possibly 100 wins today, is not going to be happy with that shot selection. Baring's 15th save of the game. He has certainly been an MVP for Fairfield despite this five-goal deficit. So here comes the Stags. Panapinto, Horning now with it. And they got to hurry. They want to get something going. The freshman off the pipe. That's got to be the third or fourth that has found the crossbar or pipe for Fairfield. Rutgers picks up the loose ball. If you're Fairfield now, you've got to start to extend. Nice check right there, getting aggressive there, playing the ball hard, but every time they come down the field here defensively, they're going to have to extend, throw some checks, maybe bring the goalie out, uh, and start to use some double teams as well. George with it in the middle of the field. Desperation check, but Coach Brian Brecht able to get a timeout in there before, and Rutgers will pause it for the time being, up 8-3. to three. Under 3.30 to go in this final frame. Timeout, Rutgers. And so, it's a good time to remind you, LSN Live is the place to hang out, have fun, talk lacrosse. Lack Sports Network crew delivers a fresh and entertaining take on the most interesting storylines in lacrosse. It's LSN Live, Thursday through Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's only here on Lack Sports Network. We mentioned Coach Brian Brecht going for his 100th career win for Rutgers as a team this year. This would get them to 3-0 on the season if they can hold on here. That's important considering some of the, the games they have going on down the stretch. After this, they have Wagner in a midweek game this coming week. And then next weekend, a week from today, you got Brown coming to town. That high-powered offense of the Brown Bears scored 25 in their opener. They're coming to town for a 2.30 start a week from now. And then you also have an a inner state game against Princeton. You got a non-conference game against Delaware before the, the gauntlet that is the Big Ten slate. Love to watch that Brown game. The way these guys play up and down, you know, that's going to be a double-digit game from both sides. Be a lot of fast pace, big plays, a lot of shots. That'll be a really, really fun game to watch between Rutgers and Brown just because of the, the styles that those guys play with. As for Fairfield, they sit at 1-1 one and one on the season coming into this one. If the result holds, they'll have to rebound. They also have a midweek game at UMass Lowell, so relatively regional. You got a game at Stony Brook, and, and then the non-conference really kicks up. You go to Yale, a team in the top 10 at the moment. You got a game at Penn State, another top 10 team. And then you play Villanova, who certainly has some offense as well. And then you get into the CAA, which is certainly a, it's a difficult conference with Towson and Hofstra, Delaware playing pretty well in Bob Schillingwall's final year. 
So no, no easy rest of the season for either of these teams. There's really not an easy game in lacrosse. When you know, when I was playing or, or growing up, there was, you know, maybe four or five teams that everybody kind of penciled on their schedule, and and you know, there were some easy wins I would say for a lot of the bigger programs. But nowadays, it's so hard to get a win. Uh, there's so much parity, and it's great for lacrosse and, and, and great for college lacrosse. Rutgers trying to run a little time off as Fairfield puts a lot of pressure on this Scarlet Knights offense, but. Under three minutes to go and a five goal lead. Rutgers in a pretty comfortable spot. Nice little trail check there from Matt Borda, but Rutgers keeps. Talking about the CAA, we're gonna have a chance here on Lack Sports Network to see lots of CAA teams this year. A slam dunk and a desperation save. They keep it out for Fairfield. And maybe a quick transition the other way. Shot is saved. Edelman again, but he loses it. Desperation time for the Stags. Loose ball scooped up by the Scarlet Knights. Just another ground ball that Rutgers beats Fairfield too. I, you know, I don't think if it's it's a lack of effort by by the Fairfield guys. It's just I think Rutgers athletically is just much better than Fairfield. Beating them to ground balls. You could tell the way when they dodge, the way they beat their matchups. Just they got a little bit better horses on the other side uh, of the field. And so Rutgers will look to take more time off. Under two minutes to go now, up five. We talk about the CAA. You have Hofstra, team that really made waves early last year. Towson coming off a quarterfinal run in the NCAA's last year. What do you like about the conference as a whole, Steve? Well, it's always a good conference. You know, Coach Tierney's always done a nice job at Hofstra. Uh, Coach Nadalin down at Towson always does an excellent job as well. And it's just, like we were talking about before, just parity overall in college lacrosse. And, and when you get into those conferences, CAAs, the Big Tens, the ACCs, you know, the Patriot League, I mean, there's so many really just solid conferences where every game is tough. And then these guys know each other so well from playing each other every year, you know, in the tournament, uh, the conference tournament. So it makes for a lot of great games when you get into that conference play. And Andy Copeland for Fairfield calls a timeout. You mentioned the CAA. We'll have a CAA game of the week starting next month here on Lack Sports Network. Got teams like Denver and Ohio State playing non-conference games against Towson, we'll, we'll have those for you. Denver, the number one team in the country. And so lots of action to watch out for here on Lack Sports Network starting next month with the CAA Game of the Week. Starting after us here, Lacrosse Central, your one-stop shop for highlights and post-game interviews from around college across. Join our hosts and analysts every Saturday afternoon. We'll showcase and break down the best men's and women's games of the day. Lacrosse Central, Saturday afternoons during the NCAA lacrosse season right here on Lack Sports Network. A lot of action going on around the country. They will recap all of that coming up after this game is over inside the LSN Broadcast Center back in Boston, Massachusetts. Really big day and some, some weather causing some issues in certain parts of the country, but overall warm. Nice, nice weekend for some February lacrosse. Not always the case. Yeah, this year's been better than years past. As yeah. There's been some some tough games out there early on in parts of the season, but this year has been pretty good for the, for the sport of lacrosse. And so Fairfield looking to see if they can add on one more down eight to three. Oh, no. Wagner tries to feed in front, scooped up by Grohl again. He has been everywhere for Rutgers. And the Scarlet Knights with under 30 seconds to go. Trying to put a seal on this one and win number, win get win number 100 for head coach Brian Brett. Twelve seconds to go. Feed all the way down to Connor Murphy. He had a hat trick in this game. Three goals, the leading scorer for Rutgers, and that is gonna do it. Scarlet Knights.
It wasn't always pretty on offense in the second half. Just one goal after the break for Rutgers. But that doesn't matter. A five-goal win for the Scarlet Knights and the 100th win in the coaching career of head coach Brian Brex. Split time as head coach at Siena and Rutgers. And he gets win number 100 now with the Scarlet Knights. We will talk to Coach Brecht when we come back. Their final, 8-3, to three, Rutgers over Fairfield. Field. We'll be back with more reaction here on LSN. Welcome back to Fairfield, your final Rutgers 8-3 over the Stags, the 15th ranked team in the country, moving to 3-0 on the season, quite offensively in the second half, Steve, but just one goal was enough to get a five-goal win. Yeah, I think they pulled up a little bit in the second half. I, you know, we'll talk to Coach Breck, maybe we'll ask him that question if that was uh, part of the strategy there, but they definitely were a little bit more methodical uh, in the second half. But we talked about it in the open. This is, this is a statement game here for Rutgers. If you want to be a legit team and you want to get into that top ten, you've got to come on the road and win games like this, games that maybe you're supposed to win. You've got to show up and put out a good performance, uh, and they did that today. For the Stags, a second loss to a top 20 team. What are they going to take away and try to learn from this loss? Well, they'll take away that they know they got a good goalie. That's for sure. They're, they're going to be happy Tyler with the way. Tyler was terrific. Yeah, he was terrific today. Really played well and, and bailed them out. I just think offensively, they've got to get creative, find some ways to create some offense, um, you know, and get some more opportunities and some more goals. I think defensively, they're okay. They've got a good foundation, you know, a couple mental lapses, you know, during the game, but for the most part, pretty good in the defensive end. They've got to find ways to score the ball offensively. And so it's Rutgers walking away with an 8-3 win, the 15th ranked team in the country. A tough week looking ahead as they've got Wagner coming to their place for a midweek game and then a game with Brown. But first things first, got to celebrate win number 100 in the head coaching career of Brian Brecht. Coach Brecht joining us now. Coach, what's it mean to get win number 100 in your head coaching career? I guess it means I've uh, coached a lot of games to have uh, those opportunities. <laughs> Fair enough. With with what you guys did offensively, it looked like you were you were rolling in the first half. Seven goals, a little bit slower, but the defense you certainly have to be happy with overall, holding this Fairfield team to just three goals. Uh, I'll tell you what, very impressed with that defensive unit, and uh, you know. Garrett Michael I coming on strong for us this year. You know, we knew what we had in Pless, you know, last year. And, uh, you know, I can't say it again, you know, the, the maturity on the defensive end with, with Chris Grohl and Michael Rexroad and Alex Bronzo. You know, obviously Max Elliman is doing a great job, um, you know, being you know, poised and, uh, and really communicating uh, to the whole group. Uh, our, our short stick rope defense, you know, they do a great job shutting down uh, the other team. And uh, it was great to see us, you know, generate so much offensive opportunities. And, you know, Coach Mitchell does such a great job of putting guys in positions to play to their strengths, and I really think we had a lot of shooting opportunities, and we probably uh, didn't shoot the ball as well as I would have liked, but uh, you know, give the Fairfield goalie a lot of credit. He's a talented player, and uh, certainly uh, he's a big reason why some of those didn't fall. Coach, obviously off to a great start, 3-0. and Maybe what's one or two things that maybe you want to improve on as you go throughout the rest of the season here that you see early on? You know what? Uh, it, you don't get a lot of opportunities in practice to replicate game-like situations, you know, when you're up by a few with a, you know, with a clock uh, on your side or, or when you're down by a few when the clock's not in your favor. And I do think the last couple of games has allowed us to grow, and hopefully we can, you know, going into the month of March, can, can get better from the game-like situations that we learn on films and, and can be able to teach and use as teaching moments for our players in the locker room uh, as we prepare, you know, uh, next week. So, uh, you know, give them a lot. It's a hot day. It's like 60, 70 degrees out here. It's still, it's still February, so... Uh, you know, we ask our rope unit to do an awful lot, you know, and, and taking, the, you know, taking the wind out of the sails of a talented offensive group and, you know, being on the road and traveling, you know, uh, you know, I, I got to catch myself sometimes because, you know, Scarpello and Mazzone and Mark Cristiano, they do a great job for us. And, you know, uh, we pick on the little things, but, you know, overall, you know, broad stroke picture, you know, they're very talented and they, they're the glue of our team and uh, we appreciate everything they do. 
Well, Coach, you said it's because you've coached a lot of games, but you won more than you lost. Congratulations on win number 100, and congrats on uh, the good day. Thank you. I appreciate it. You guys do a great job. So uh, thank you for uh, you know showcasing our program, our players, and, and doing a great job for the sport as it grows. You guys, are, you guys are first class. Thanks, Coach. Coach Brian Breck from Rutgers, now winner of 100 games in his head coaching career. As for now, that's your final score, 8-3, Rutgers, the 15th ranked team in the country over Fairfield. Thanks for watching College Lacrosse on Lac Sports Network. For the most comprehensive look at all of today's lacrosse action, stay right here for Lacrosse, lacrosse Central on LSN. For our whole crew, Steve Panarelli, I'm Travis Eldridge. Thanks for watching Lac Sports Network, where it's all action.